well as with all things we have the opportunity to do as we approach Halloween, uh, I have, <laughs> without a doubt, the Witch of Veeam 1. Uh, Melissa Palmer here with me today for part two of VAO 3 o Melissa? Yeah, so that can get a little confusing. I have the SpaceX jacket on for the VAO launch, but I have the Veeam 1 <laughs> Witch hat on because a lot of people have just been randomly calling me witch lately, and I don't know if it's because of the Veeam 1 thing or maybe something else, but I figured, hey, it's Halloween, and Veeam is life. Every day is Halloween, so I figured I would embrace it a little bit. Why not? I've got skulls and crossbones on here, too. So it's, really hot. it's all great. I love it. Very much so. So, folks, just so we can kind of recap, uh, we've already got um, part one out on the website. Okay, we put links to it on LinkedIn and out on Twitter as well. I'm passing those around. Remember that we are diligently looking for folks to subscribe to both of our YouTube channels. So yes, we'll please, so I can do more yeah. cool stuff on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and aside from that, we're into part two today. Now remember, yeah. we had talked at length about, guys, it's documentation and other cool things. Don't miss this today. This is the money on the end, okay? It truly is. Um, and we want to get your feedback. Please drop us a note, blog at vanimal.com, beamanimal.com, uh, or put anything inside the notes of uh, where we post our videos. So without any further ado, Melissa, thank you again for being here, and it's all you. It's always my pleasure. Do I have uh, sharing screen rights? Let me give it to you right now. As we all learned this week, uh, a couple weeks ago, I'm not good at showing my screen believe it or not i am like impaired when it comes to trying to share things bingo all right so i'm going to show hopefully the right thing can you open a few more tabs i'm just curious yeah i can i can <laughs> all right are we seeing my screen now we am seeing your screen yes we're seeing a beautiful powerpoint presentation now i swear i'm just going to do a couple really quick slides so Friendly reminder, we're here today to talk about Veeam Availability Orchestrator 3. Talking about orchestrating VR for things like Veeam Replicas, Veeam Backups, and in version 3, NetApp on tap snapshots. So we spent a lot of time talking about how VAO actually works last week. I showed you how to configure it. I showed you how to create a orchestration plan. I showed you how to use the API to kick it off from Veeam 1. I showed you lots of cool stuff. Today, we're gonna to focus on two different things. We're gonna focus on documentation because this is such an important part of DR. And then we're gonna talk about automated testing as well. So two important things. I have just a couple more slides on. So disaster recovery documentation is terrible. I'm sure you've had the binder of DR documentation that is outdated just as soon as you print it. Maybe you keep it in the trunk of your car, maybe it's in the locker of the DR site, it's never quite right. In VAO, we have the ability to create customized templates. So I can create a magnificent template per application, per site, whatever I decide want to. I can do that in a bunch of different languages. And then I can use that template to have four different report types automatically generated. Generated. So that's a plan definition. That's your DR definition plan and your audit log of what's changed. A readiness check is a really lightweight check. You can schedule it to run daily to make sure that you're meeting your RPOs and you're always ready for a failover. A data lab test is showing you how we're gonna meet your RTO, right? Because we're actually going to test your DR plan in a Veeam data lab. And you're gonna get that all documented with clearly, uh, and it's clearly gonna state that, hey, you're meeting your RTO and RPO. And then finally, should you need to actually perform a failover or you're using VAO for a plan migration, you will get an execution report. And of course, everything will be perfect because you've tested VAO so much. Now, one thing I just mentioned was Veeam Data Labs. Now, Van, I'm interested in your perspective on this a little bit because I know that there's lots of people in the field using Data Labs. Some customers are not using Data Labs or just getting started. If you had to describe a Veeam Data Lab in like three sentences, how would you do it? I thank you for the question. And, and quite honestly, I share with customers when we're talking on the phone, it is a simple, secluded environment for you to test things that may go wrong or may break. That's pretty much it. I love that. Yeah. It's an it's a bubble, right? We're going to create a copy of your application environment in a bubble, non-disruptive for production, and then we're going to throw it away when it's done. So you can go in and break it. You can test that new zero day patch that came out. You can let the new guy who's new to the application 
try to figure out how it works, right? And he doesn't have to worry about breaking everything. And there's a couple of key components that I'm going to show you within VAL and actually within BNR too, because you do need to configure a little bit in Beam Backup and Replication. In BNR, we're gonna go and we're gonna configure a proxy appliance. And that's just gonna what, what lets the outside world talk to this isolated bubble, right? And you can actually get to the bubble right through the VAO UI. You don't need to mess around with anything else. You can just hit it from the UI. It makes it simple, super simple to consume. And then within VAO, we have something called a VAO lab group. And if you're used to Sure Backup World, uh, you'll, you're probably familiar with something called an application group. This is exactly the same thing, right? These are the supporting VMs that your application might need, AD, DNS, stuff like that. Maybe use some kind of shared server. You put them in the VAO lab group, and they start up as part of the data lab to provide the services to your application. We call it something else in VAO and we actually handle it through VAO as well, making your BNR configuration pretty minimal, just that proxy appliance. So let's go to the lab because we all love the lab. And we're all familiar with our VAO dashboard, uh, super easy to use HTML5 interface. So what we're gonna do first is, I think we're gonna talk about documentation. So if we come over to reports here, okay, here's like everything, everything within VAO. There's a ton of reports in here. We can export them all. We can look at stuff individually. And what I just want to do, I think, is pretty much go through each report type and just kind of talk through it. So if I remember correctly, the Silicon Lift application tier two, this definition report, I think I have a good example of somebody that went and messed around with things on me. Because remember, this report is gonna have a full audit log. As you can see, I've customized this template. I have my hot pink rocket logo that I've used for I don't know how many years. I, I like rockets, we all know that. <laughs> and a lot of what you're gonna see in this report is canned and templated. And I'll show you how to edit that template later, but all of it kind of will go through all of your different report types. So you'll always have that key information. Uh, the templates are really nice because you can give everything the same kind of look and feel just from a reportability standpoint. Because remember, we can subscribe people to these reports in VAO. I might have subscribed someone at some point and just bombed them with all my different readiness checks when I was building a new lab for fun, right? You can do a lot of stuff. And you can keep those key stakeholders in the loop. So let's go through a definition report. So here is a table of contents, which is all hyperlinked. So I added a bunch of stuff here. So I added information about a recovery team, but most importantly, the recovery objectives are clearly stated, right? RTO, RPO, here's what it is for this application. I added this information, hey, here's how the recovery team works, here's the two teams, blah, blah, blah. VAO will notify the application owner, the recovery team will come in and take a look and follow up, all that good procedural stuff. I have a diagram of our application because that's always, uh, always good to have. And other information, right? In case of migration or disaster, you might get hungry. Here are some great places that are always open. So we got coffee, we got pizza, and we should be good to go. And don't forget to ask for your special Veeam discount. Now, this is just going to pull general information about the VAO server, very important from an auditing perspective. And we'll go through the plan properties. So plan name, I didn't put, fill out the contact information. You would see it there. Once again, we're tracking that RTO and RPO, we're going to see that a couple times. We're going to kind of hammer it home that here's what these values are and here's how we meet them with other reports, server properties, license, document settings and distribution, right? So I don't have this being emailed to everybody, but it would tell you in the document who it goes to. How cool is that? It also tells you the template it's using. Recovery location. So this is important because this is actually a restore plan. So we're restoring from Beam Backup. And again, everything's hyperlinked in here. So if I click this recovery location, it brings me to the information I need. So here's my recovery location. Here's how I set it up. Here's all my resources that are in it. Here's my networking. Here's all that good stuff. If we go back up and we click our, oh, we have pre-planned steps in this one. What do we say? License check. Okay, that's important. DNS changes. That's a custom script that I have uploaded to, DNA, uh, to VAO to make DNS changes. And then if we go to VM group, I'm going to use the hyperlink again because it's fun. So we're going to click the hyperlink again, and it's going to bring me back to where I was. But this is where it goes through your VMs, right? So here is our options for the VM group. Here's the definition, right? So this is basically the vSphere tag and category that we're using to build this VM group, because it all ties back to vSphere tags. We love them. Uh, we'll hit the change log in a second. But we go through all of these different VMs in the plan 
and each and every step that's taken on them. So you can see, you know, check license, restore VM, check heartbeat, restore migrate, right? Because it is a, we're restoring from backup. <clears throat> uh, we have the domain controller. We have IIS, we have another web server. And you know what? It seems like something's missing from this because all I have is like these five can steps and I feel like I should have more. I mean, VAO does all this wonderful enterprise application verification out of the box and I don't see anything. So let's keep scrolling down and get to um, some more information. Now, again, here are the detailed information on each step. So this DNS changes, it shows that it's a script, all that good stuff where it's running. Here's what happens during the check VM heartbeat set. Here's kind of things for audit. Here's how it's configured. Here's how it works. But let's keep going to this plan change log, right? So, okay, so I created the plan. I did all this stuff, right? So I added DNS changes, I added that application verification script, I added SQL steps out of the box to the DB servers, DNS port to my D DC that's also DNS port, and I added web server ports, but then what happened? I can see right here that someone logged in and they undid everything I did, right? That is a huge potential audit point and that's a huge potential issue in the event of a DR. So again, you can configure these reports to be sent on a daily basis. You can see right here, when I built this plan, I scheduled the plan definition and the readiness check to run daily and they'll be emailed. So again, this is your plan definition report. It's automatically created for each and every orchestration plan or DR plan, you know, same type of thing. We call it an orchestration plan and you're good to go. So that is report one. That, that stuff is just, it just kills me. And I, and I say that in a good way because I literally have conversations with customers, Melissa, almost twice a week about, hey, tell me about your plan for DR. They don't have a plan. It's in Not someone's head, you know, or it's in some guy's, you know, laptop somewhere. And I'm like, guys, I used to joke. I used to have a clipboard with a DR yeah. plan on it, right? I have my clipboard that I used to make all the check marks on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, this stuff's invaluable. Great, great. Thank you so much. All right, let's hit a readiness check that has some errors. Um, these all have errors from when I installed this version of VAO, so hopefully they're really messy. Because one of the great things about these reports, specifically the readiness check and the lab test report, is if it errors out and if something happens, VAO tells you what it is and it makes it really easy to fix it. So let's see what kind of errors we can find in here. Again, all the reports are based on a unified template and they look, smell, and feel the same. So it makes it very easy to use, um, very easy to read, right? We have all the same things we had here, that recovery team, that application information, it's all good. That's important too, and I think a lot of people kind of discount that, right? We want a unified look and feel to all our reporting because in the middle of a disaster, the last thing we want to do is struggle with reading a report, right? Like, and like, what's going on here? I can't tell. You don't want to deal with any of that. So this readiness check tells us we're not ready because we have five errors and 11 warnings. Hmm, that doesn't sound so good, but that's why we run these readiness checks, right? To see what the deal is. So I got some warnings here, tier two recovery. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I didn't set up the network mapping when I created my recovery location because this was a brand new install I was doing. So remember I showed you last week when you create that recovery location, you can map your networks, right? So I can say, I'm source VM network here and I'm VM network 24 in DR. So when I ran this check, it said, hey, I can't make the networking work. We're going to have a problem when you recover. Obviously, that's an issue, so I went in and fixed it. Everything else is green, though. We like that. We like green check marks. Uh, we've got our licenses. Now VM groups. Oh, look at all that. Red X is down the line, not ready. What is going on here? I bet they're all going to have the same error, too. Oh, OK. So this ties back to my recovery location. It's basically saying, hey, your VM's ready, but we can't restore it anywhere because it's not going to run. It's not going to work because I never did that network map, map, mapping piece. What this would also tell you, and I think we're okay on this one, like if you failed your RPO, you would see it right here, right? You'd have like X and it would say RPO not met, restore point age is 26 hours and you specify 24 hours. You don't meet your RPO. So again, these reports are really good for fixing things as you're coming online with your first um, your first disaster recovery plan, right? I think when we ran one last week, Van, it worked on the first shot, but that is kind of a readiness check in a nutshell, really lightweight check to make sure that you're good when you go to run. Yeah. 
Let's see, do I have a failed data lab test? Hmm. Let's see, I don't, but that's okay. Oh wait, here's some more failed readiness checks too. Let's look at another failed readiness check. Maybe we'll learn something else. This should be a good one, it's a storage plan. It's probably Melissa did something stupid in her lab and everything failed. I was playing with um, Veeam 1 a little too much and I flipped that mode that we talked about with the vSphere tags and it might have blown out all the vSphere tags I had in Veeam 1. So VAO was like, what are you doing here? And it just yelled at me until I flipped it back. All right, four errors. We like to see four errors. We got one error, four warnings. We got three errors in our VMs. Let's, let's click here. All right, not ready. So that's our recovery location is not ready. Oh, this group does not contain any compute resources. Yeah, that could be a problem, couldn't it? So that I think was the example when I blew out all my vSphere tags and they weren't working. So, not for me. <laughs> so there were no actual cluster, no yeah. actual clusters or hosts in my recovery location, so I couldn't recover. So VIO was good at catching all that kind of stuff too. So let's find a data lab test. And I don't think I really have any errors for those, but that's okay. Um, again, if there was some kind of error, if your VM failed to check, if the application verification came back with an error, if your script came back with an error, all of that's gonna be in your documentation. Let's say I got a warning, a data lab test warning. All right, let's try that. That's better than a clean one. I actually had someone complain, Van, that when I did a VAO demo, I had too much green and they wanted to see more stuff wrong. So I had to just like break stuff for them and then show them how it caught all the stuff that was broken. But I've been getting that a lot. Like everything's so green. That's why my um, Veeam 1 environment's like a dumpster fire on a regular basis. I don't ever fix everything because I want to show it finding the errors. I, I have to tell you that I, I literally did a demo this morning with a customer when I was chatting with him. He said, can you show me what would happen if that blew up? And I literally went through and disconnected some of the stores, repositories. and things. Sure. Check it out now, you know? It, that's funny that you would say that. Okay, right. so. Once again, in these reports, we're always going to say our RTO and RPO because that is like super important application information, all that good stuff. But let's see what's blown up in here. These are really, like I said, they're good for troubleshooting when you're trying to get a plan right. And VA is good about telling you, okay, we got some warnings. Warning. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I know. I remember this one. So this is when I was working on the custom scripting in VAO. And remember I showed you, we kind of have those common parameters that we can pass back and forth between VIO and um, PowerShell. Yeah, I wasn't doing it right. So when I actually had my script in there to say, hey, run this parameter, I didn't reference it correctly. And it just came back with all these errors. Like, what did you do, you silly person? So that's what that is. And that's a really good example of how an error would work with a script, right? So that's how that one blew up in my face. But then well, I the, other part, the other part of that too, you know, the simple fact that we talked about uh, two weeks ago when we got together, what can we script? Well, flipping anything, okay? Everything. And, and here's your check right here, you know, after you yeah, script okay, again. It, did anything work? Yeah. And again, everything is really verbose. You can just write host in your scripts to write directly to the VAO reports as well. Cause that's what I was doing here that what's my name again? Oh, see, that was my error message. Because I'll show you when we run a data lab test, the successful version says, hello, my name is, and the VM name. And my error message that I wrote host with an error was, what's my name again? Because, haha, I thought it was funny. All right, one more report I want to look at real quick. And we're going to look at a plan execution. And if I remember correctly, last week we executed something or another as part of our demo. And we're going to look at this one because it has a warning, but we're going to remember, we're going to show why this warning is because it worked, but it still threw us a warning. I think this was the one from uh, last week or two weeks ago. So anyway, all our key information. So we're nice and comfortable using these reports in the event of a disaster. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Four errors. I don't know what I did wrong this time. Let's see. Warning, pre-planned steps. VM control error. Ah, okay. So. Remember I went into Veeam 1 and I just basically went in and killed my VMs. I was just like, ha, 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 I'm gonna kill all my hosts and let uh, Veeam 1 hit the API and fail everything over. One thing to remember about VAO is it's very graceful. 
first thing it's going to do is it's going to check your source data center and if those vms are still running and it can tell that they're still running right it's going to shut them down and then when it's shut down it's going to quiesce that snap mirror one more time and then it's going to break the mirror and then it's going to remount it in a new location because this was a hard failure and i just freaking killed it right it looked at vcenter and vcenter was like still confused over is my stuff failing what is going on here and it couldn't shut down the vms right they were kind of in that limbo state because remember when we logged into vcenter i think i have something wrong there in my vcenter like the vms looked like they were still running but the host world disconnected that's just like some weird issue i have because this is a three-year-old nested vsphere lab running like six seven or something like that so there's probably some bug but that's what that was so vao is going to be really graceful if you're using it for a planned migration you don't need to worry about any of that stuff like oh let me shut down the vms do the final sync it, it's really nice and it'll clean up after itself right so if that site was still alive after i had everything mounted and running in the new data center um it would actually unmount the storage from the source location for me and then if i cho uh, chose the option to protect my data after failover it would initiate the reverse resync in the other direction so that's what that error was from. So let me find you a nice clean execution report because we always like to look for the errors. Oh, here's a replica one. We love replicas, don't we, Van? I'm all about replicas, personally. I love replicas. Replicas are great. I mean, they're, I don't know. I kind of feel like they, they don't get enough love and maybe they're a little underused, but whatever. I love replicas. So let's just scroll through our report that we're very familiar with at this point. And we see all this green, right? So look, our RPO is met, our RTO is met, everything is looking good. And I think I forgot to show you in that data lab test report. Let me go back here. There is a spot where it talks about RPO and RTO in here someplace towards the beginning. Like it says it really clearly, like, hey, you met your stuff. <laughs> Do, do, do. So duration, all that good stuff. Where is it? I think it's down here someplace. But again, you can see start time, end time, how long it took, all that good stuff. Oh, here we go. I can't read today, man. RPO, RTO, mm -hmm. all the green check marks. And remember, this is a data lab test. We are proving that we are meeting our RPO and RTO really simply. So that's good. Plan execution. I was just scrolling through this replica one. Um, everything looks great. Lots of green check marks. We're pretty much good to go. Everybody's happy. And here's again, here are the exact steps that it actually took when it failed over. Remember, this was a Veeam replica. Here's where it found, here's the job it found it in. Here's the RPO. Here's the restore point. I mean, here's the failover starting. We're good to go. So those are the four VAO reports of the data center apocalypse, so to speak, in a nutshell. Again, you can customize these templates. You come into here, you click here, you click edit. Um, it's going to open Microsoft Word, and you just you just customize everything in Word. You know, we're not going to bother customizing the template. It's a Word template. You can handle it, prom I promise you. If you've ever used a Word document in your life, you can create be beautiful VAO documentation. So that's basically um, reporting. Really good for auditing, knowing what's going on. Subscribe them. Here they are on our here they are in all different languages and use them to troubleshoot your environment so you can get all of those green check marks in the event of a data lab test or failover. Yeah, and the, and truthfully, in the templates and stuff, that's one of the things I show when I'm demoing this. Yeah. It, it literally takes minutes to drop your logo. Very, that's it. <laughs> it's very straightforward. And if you guys can type in Word, you can edit a template, truly. You can create a beautiful DR plan, beautiful DR plan. So let's switch gears and talk about data labs a little bit, right? So first thing I want to do is actually kick off a data lab test and hope we get lucky and it works. So I come here, I click verify, I say run data lab test, I pick my data lab that I want to use. Uh, I'm going to leave it powered on because we're going to want to poke around it a little while. Again, this is a great way to give your app teams access for um, you know, application testing, patch testing, whatever, you can leave it powered on, increase the ROI of those DR resources by proving you can reuse your data in an automated fashion. We're gonna cheat and not pick a lab group so this runs super fast, but remember the lab groups are like an application group in BNR. There are any supporting VMs that your application needs to run. I click next, I click finish, and I am literally running a full DR test. That's it. We're done, running test. 
Well, except for that little chatting thing, that took about uh, 11 seconds. To get I know, out. right? It really yeah. doesn't take anything. So how do I actually configure the, v, uh, the data labs in VAO, right? So I come over here to data lab assignment. This is where you're going to map your data labs that you have created in BNR, and we'll hit BNR console next. This is how you're going to uh, map them, actually. Let's make this a little bigger. This is how you're going to map them. Oh, I'm brain dead today. This is how you're going to map them from BNR to VAO. So I have this one that says unassigned Cassiopeia because I went with both the Harry Potter Black family theme, where everybody in the Black family is named after a constellation, and the space theme with the constellation Cassiopeia. So we're going to assign that. And we're just going to put it in my admin scope so I see it everywhere. But remember, scopes are kind of like our rule-based access that we use in VAO. Well, they're not kind of like, they are. So we could map them to specific applications or teams. And I've assigned it. So now I leave here and I go to data labs inside of VAO. And I can actually edit the data lab here. So where is Cassiopeia? Cassiopeia is here. I'm going to edit Cassiopeia. And here's where I can add a lab group and either a replica or restore. And I wish I could remember what kind of lab group I created before. I think it was a restore. Let's see. No records. All right. So we're just going to pretend it's a restore and we're going to say Veeam main DC. This is the one I had in the other one, right? So this is the lab group VM. So if I click here and view VMs, it'll tell me in a moment. TPM, ignore the server names, they're not quite right. So this is telling me that this VM is in this lab group and it's gonna be started with my data lab to provide any of those services that my VM needs. So we click next. Uh, if any VM recovery fails, what do I wanna do? Halt or proceed, that's important because it's just like a DR plan, right? If any VM recovery fails, do I wanna halt and proceed? Recover simultaneously in sequence, we'll make it sequence. Uh, we'll leave it there. New VM template. I can add anything I need to for that lab group. So um, what did I say? I said I put a domain controller in there or something like that, right? So I want to verify my domain controller port to make sure that everything's working with my domain controller before my application comes up. We click finish and I've basically created my data lab. I've mapped that application application group that via uh, VAO lab group right to it. So now I'm basically ready to go run a data lab test with this new data lab I created. Yes, I want to save changes. So I come back here and I'm going to let that other lab um, we created run, but I want to show you the lab calendar too, right? So I can come in here and I can actually create a schedule for these data lab tests to run, right? I don't even have to log in and click that button for 20 seconds like I showed you. So I can bad. create a schedule, so right? Bad. <laughs> so let's create the schedule. We're going to go with our admin scope, and we're going to call it DR Test Tuesday. Test. Because, Van, I'm trying to start a hashtag on Twitter and use DR Test Tuesday and like do more on Twitter making videos around VAO and DR testing. So, we're going to call it DR Test Tuesday. We're cool. going to pick our data lab. Let's pick our friend Cassiopeia we just hooked up. We have the lab group we configured for that data lab. We're going to add it here. Start time and recurrence. So we're going to run it weekly on the same time. So we're going to run this test every Tuesday. So let's schedule it for next Tuesday. Click apply. Um, same time. Yeah, let's run it at one o'clock afternoon. It's like non disruptive to production. So literally, who cares when we run it? It does not matter. Uh, let's say, and here are the plans that I want to run in this data lab. So we're going to run the Vanimo plan. Why not? That's the one we created last time. And then test and power off and test and leave powered on. We're going to give our team eight hours to go in there and mess around with stuff after we run our data lab test. So they'll get their report saying, hey, your test is successful. When they get that report, then they know they can go log into the VAO UI and hit their lab right there, which is what I'm going to show you next. So seriously, that's it. We've just scheduled a data lab test to run. You can see in the lab calendar now, I've got DR test Tuesday every Tuesday going forward. It's so simple. For you guys who are or are not paying attention to that spot right there, that, that was a conversation you just walked in and had with the C-level group of folks going, hey, by the way, we run our DR test every week. So when they come around doing the 9001 ISO and all those kind of good certifications, oh, by the way, and here's a copy of the results. Boom. 
Exactly. And we literally do have VAO customers just running a lab test scheduled like this every week because it's so simple, it's so lightweight, and it's completely non-disruptive. Why wouldn't you? I would. I do. DR Test Tuesday. Take it for me. So let's go back and take a look at our data lab and what's going on and see if we're being successful here. Again, VAO is really good at um, just kind of telling you what's going on so we can see everything that happened here with my DR test. And my DR test is actually in progress. But this is actually a storage plan, right? So let's show you some really interesting stuff here. If I come to my pre-plan steps and click storage failover for my DR test, Van, you're a NetApp person. What do you see here on the side? Trying to unmute my muted here. <laughs> <laughs> Execution attempt. Uh, clone snapshots. Oh, what right now? Yeah, exactly. So let's go over to our virtual data center here. And what do we have? We have a couple things, right? So we have our data lab running here. Right, and that says data lab. And what do we have here? We have Krypton Sore DB underscore VAO lab, right? That is actually our VM that is running in our data lab. And it has that VAO lab suffix on the end of it. So it's really easy for us to identify that, hey, this is our VAO VM. So we could log in here and just hit it from vCenter if we want to open a console. But we do the same thing for storage, right? Ignore my messy storage issues. I'm running out of space. Ignore it. But again, we have that volume, that VAO, that beam on NetApp volume underscore VAO lab. That's the clone of the volume that we're testing with. Oh, look, everything completed while we were talking, Van. We're at 100%, right? So if we look at our data store, and I might have done some weird stuff in here to cheat and make this run super fast, but I think Krypton Store DB was the one we saw on vCenter, right? So if we go back to vCenter. Krypton Store DB, let's like go in and hit that server. So I click here, again, I click VM console. And I can get the console of the VM into my data lab and I can do whatever I need to. So say control all delete, I can log into it here. And as an application owner, I could go in and make any you know manual visual um, validation that I have to do. Cause sometimes that's the thing, right? Like they actually want someone to go log into the VM and make sure it works. You know, you can script left and right, but until someone's logged into that VM and said, yeah, it looks good. Like some people won't sign off on their DR test or their DR plan, right? So we could come in here, look, smells and feels just like a regular server, cause it is, but remember it's a copy. We're gonna do whatever we want to it and we're gonna blow it away and throw it away when we're done, right? Does it really get any simpler than that? Nope, it's like a trash bag in and out in the toilet. It's gone. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's a data lab test running. That's a DR test running right there. And I showed you all how to configure it. it it's pretty simple. All of VAO is really simple, right? It's simple. You can do all of this stuff. It takes less than, you saw that, like 20 seconds to run a DR test. It takes less than 10 minutes to create a plan. It takes less than 20 minutes to configure. The big question is, why aren't you using it? And, and I don't that is a big that. question. I mean, it truly is. I mean, if you can run on your DR test Tuesday, have that set up and schedule it, it's not going to affect your environment. It's only going to be good things for you because it's going to tell you that you are ready. Why would you not do it? It's like you walk to the doctor and the doctor says, look, if you take this pill every day, you're not going to have to worry about growing a third eye. Well, you know, you're going to take the pill, right? But do look, I remember, I remember when I was a customer and I had... I manage a vSphere environment, big surprise, but our DR environment was garbage. It was the old vSphere hosts and the storage was um, big SATA disks with no flash cache because it was not up back in the day. There was no flash cache, so it just ran like garbage. It was terrible, right? Because people were like, well, it's disaster recovery. Who cares? You might not even use it. So that's how you end up with the five-year-old hardware that's not supported and all that stuff. And, and fine, okay. You might not use it, but what happens when you have to, right? What happens when you are failing over your complete data center to this garbage environment because people banked on not using it? You can use something like Beam Data Labs to actually prove the ROI of that hardware, right? So, hey, let's do an upgrade. Let's get better stuff. And here's a plan I can put in place to give testing environments to my application teams that do not impact production, but accelerate their business. They can go in there and test their application upgrades. They can do the patch testing when that zero day is out. 
They can train new people. They can test out, you know, pretty much anything they want. The possibilities are endless for non-disruptive copies of your data. And that can really help customers make the justification to actually spend the time and money architecting their DR site the right way. Yeah, and think about the simple fact that, you know, Melissa makes a, a absolutely excellent point the fact that hey i've got all this old hardware that sits on the other side of the world and we don't do anything with it the problem is do you want to be part of the team that's got to explain to folks that they don't have a job now because there's no data center for them to recover to so they're out of business that, and that's the reality that's not like oh that's sales crap i'm not a salesperson melissa's not a salesperson i'm what not a salesperson not at all yeah, that's what we do but think about the fact that the little tiny bit of time you can spend making sure that when it's time for you to recover, because anything spinning does what? It stops one day. You know, you have an ability to bring that back, okay? Just some thoughts. So remember, it takes 20 minutes, you install it, it's a Windows-based application, you install it, you run through the initial configuration wizard, it takes you 20 minutes to configure it, and then you're another 10 minutes away from testing a DR application. You can download a free 30 day trial on beam.com right now. So like what reason is there not to at least download it, throw it in, kick the tires and see if it can help, right? Because again, you're gonna get all of that dynamically generated documentation sent to key stakeholders uh, in VAO for you to download pretty much however you wanna consume this documentation you can. It's gonna keep the C levels in the loop. It's gonna keep the app owners in the loop. It's gonna keep the infrastructure people in the loop and you'll be able to find those potential issues with your DR plans in your environment before they even happen. You're not going to hit that auto point. You're not going to have a DR actual event fail because you've tested it so much and we're constantly checking your environment out. So really go download the free, tri free trial, install it, and it will completely change the way you do DR exercises forever. Yep. No, I, I was waiting for the applause because oh, trust me, no that, that, that was worth the applause. It really was. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we at next, ma'am? What do you see? Um, you know, I think I just want to go through one more thing that we did last time. I want to take a look at the orchestration plans one more time. And again, I just want to show you people, you people, you people. Yes, we're talking to people on the phone, right? We're not talking to robots. Again, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is go and create a new plan for anybody that didn't catch uh, part one, because I'm telling you how easy this is, and just blow through it real quick, less than 10 minutes, probably in five, and show you what it is. So um, I'm logged in as administrator, so I see everything here. Plan information, all the stuff I didn't fill out in my reports, uh, test 22, contact name information, plan type. Again, we can restore from Beam backups, orchestrate NetApp storage, and uh, failover from Beam replicas. So you would pick the plan type you want, and there's only really subtle differences. If I click restore, you'll see I have the most things to configure because I need to pick my recovery location that I'm restoring to. We configured recovery locations last time. If I click uh, replica, that goes away, but I have this protect VM group step. So we're actually gonna do a replica plan today, because if I clicked a storage plan, we wouldn't have that step. And I want to show you because it's super cool. So we're going to go with a Veeam replica. Again, I can't say enough things about Veeam replicas. They are awesome. So I think I called my VM replica, Windows replication. That's my application. It's very original. I can view VMs. I've got a lovely Windows server in there. Recovery options, again, do I halt the plan or do I continue? If you halt the plan, you can go in there, try to mess around with stuff and get it working, or you can just keep on blowing on through. Simultaneously or in sequence, if I switch to in sequence, I lose this simultaneous thing because we're going to go one by one by one and recover them. Really important if you have, you know, dependencies within the application, all that good stuff. The new VM template, we have so many out of the box enterprise verification steps. Any step I pick right here is going to be applied to all of my VMs. So we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of, you know, all these enterprise things. We're going to go edit our plan afterwards and do that. But let's add our application verification script because we have to verify each VM in our plan due to our corporate standards or how we're regulated. Now, here's the cool thing. Protect VMs after recovery. We talked about in NetApp world, I'll reverse resync that mirror and send the data back 
the other way. Guess what? I can create a template job in BNR and select it in here. So 12 or 24 hour RPO, I have a couple templates. And after I actually fail over, BNR will start protecting my data because remember that's production now, right? So we can actually continue to back up these VMs after we fail them over, super cool. RPO, RTO, again, really important. We set them right here and we're always gonna check those out for you with the data lab test. We'll check your RPO, uh, your RTO, and then we'll check your RPO with the data lab test and the lightweight readiness check. Pick my beautiful report template that I have configured, schedule it to run. I'm gonna update my plan definition, run my readiness check once a day. I'm gonna run the readiness check after I create the plan. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna click finish, and I literally just created a DR plan, test 22. So it's creating right now. When it finishes, it's just gonna run that readiness check for me. Hopefully it'll come back green. If not, we'll see. We passed our test. And now again, really quickly, if I wanted to come in and edit it, right? So I could come in, if I had multiple VMs, I could edit the uh, order things were in and I can add additional steps here. So I could say, add a step. Um, pick my, let's pretend this is a SQL server, add my SQL step here, and then change that because I want to verify the port before I run my script, save it, I've edited it, and my plan definition report will be updated accordingly. That's all there is to it. So we picked the plan. Now, of course, I mean, we spent the basically 30 minutes to configure VAO. Okay, that's done. We go in, pull our plan together and stuff, and, and I watch the clock when you do these because of real things I want to share with our customers and folks that are thinking about talking to us. Two minutes and 10 seconds. That's how long it took to put that together. And she went in and edited it as well to, to put something custom there. And you can do this all day long. Create all the plans you want. Uh, it's unreal. What a great tool. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Cool. And again, you hit the launch button here because I love the launch button. It's my favorite button in VAO. You hit launch and you can run your plans. But it says launch, so I like it. That's awesome. So today we got a chance to poke through the documentation. Yeah. We ran through some of the stuff inside the data labs. We've gone back in to just do a quick review over the orchestration plans themselves. And again, the launch button being the key thing we want to talk about. And we got to see her witch's hat. Dude, talk about a wonderful opportunity today. It's been great. So well, once again, we, thank you for having me and letting me share this, man. Please, you're so awesome. We really appreciate you coming on and doing this for us. Guys, aside from the fact that you know you're gonna see Melissa all over the place and Twitter, you're gonna see her out on YouTube and the things that she does for Veeam, you know, remember there are so many nuances that you can change in your environment and simply test them with this tool. It, it doesn't make any sense for you not to pull down the 30-day trial and just run it and play with it. Yep. If you have things that you want to see that are done different, drop us a line. Someone, or pick up the phone, call us over Veeam and say, hey, I'd like to talk to an engineer. I'd like to see a demo. You want us to set up in your place? We'd be glad to do it for you. This is the tool that's going to make the difference for you. So with that, uh, Melissa, once you've got something else, let's pull over to some Q&A and Sounds I'll pull it up real quick. So anyway, Melissa, thank you again for being with us today. Uh, appreciate all your insight as always. And folks, I'm walking through some of the questions that are here now. We're going to clip our video and let's answer some of those questions. And remember, there's a brand new set of Apple iPod Air Pros coming out with somebody. Yeah, you definitely want a pair. So ask me some really good VIO questions and I'm happy to answer them. All right, so let's kill these and see what we got. 